Welcome back to another video where, as you could tell from that intro, we are talking about this, the Lamborghini Huracan Spider, which I have uh, for a few days. I'm so excited. I've been lucky enough to drive a Huracan and a Huracan Performante, but never a Spider. So super pumped about this. As we're next to a busy road here. It's harder and harder to find spots where I can take my mask off and talk to you guys, because uh, I think it is better if I, if I don't have the mask on. And so here, at least there's no one around, so it's perfectly safe uh, to be able to, to do this video. But this is it. This is the car, the LP610-4, four-wheel drive version of the Lamborghini Huracan. And today, we're gonna go for a drive in this, talk about the performance, talk about how the car is when you go on a little country road. We're gonna go up into these mountains right here and test the car's performance. But then, I'm also gonna be making a video which, which will, if it's out already, will be linked around somewhere on the screen. Um, well, I'm actually going to be daily driving this car for a little while. So can you live every single day with a Lamborghini? Is that feasible? If you had just this car, if you won the lottery and decided to spend all of the money you won on a car, could you live with it every single day? So that's the question I want to answer. Kind of intrigues me. So I'm going to be doing the experiment, which I feel very lucky about. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. So first of all, I'm going to walk you around the exterior a little bit, walk you around the interior, and then we're going to go for a drive. So, what do we have here? We've got the LP610-4, as I said, in this black, beautiful black color with awesome green uh, brake calipers. Carbon ceramic brakes on these, and you've got these all black uh, wheels. Um, it looks awesome. Now, this is not the facelift, so you've, you've got the, the Evo now, as it's called, um, which is a facelifted version, which drives really nice. I have actually driven the Evo, and uh, it is a slightly different experience, but these are already fantastic, and they're decent value now. Uh, I mean, they're a very, very expensive car, uh, obviously, but for what it is, compared to other cars that offer this kind of performance and supercar feeling, it's not uh, not that bad value. Now, I just parked up here, and I don't know what it is, but some stuff has just fallen onto the car. I don't know if you can tell the white dots, so please excuse those. And the license plate placement, because it is uh, yeah, pretty terrible in this car. But this, I have to say also, a massive thank you to the guys that are going to pop up on screen right now um, who are a rental company, a supercar rental company here in France and have lent me the car for a while. It's really exciting for them. I know they're pumped to be getting this car. And before they actually take delivery of it, it got brought to me to test out. So thank you so much for lending me the car. It's got some nice little details like the full black finish over the engine here. So the engine is in the back, obviously V10, naturally aspirated, 610 horsepower. You've got these quad exhausts, which are kind of at a certain angle and look really nice. Now, uh, the Hurricane, when it first came out, was in coupe form. Then you got the Spider, then you got the Performante, which is a hardcore version. Performante Spider, Evo, Evo Spider, and then now STO, which is an even more hardcore version of this car. Kind of funky, so when you get close to the car, this is what the key looks like. You unlock the car, the door handles pop out right there. So that's, not only does it look cool, but it's also good for the aerodynamics. You don't have a big door handle, which is going to be blocking the airflow there. You've got a nice little air vent right here, bringing some cool air to the engine. And let me just get that door handle back out again. You, oh, one thing you have to notice also is how it, everything is angular on this car. And the wing mirrors are massive. When you're driving this, you realize just how big the wing mirrors are. Thank God they're electric and you can fold them in. And once you get inside, this one's got a really, really nice spec. So yeah, green stitching all throughout the car. Uh, really nice with the Lamborghini logo right here. Hurricane writing the Italian flag and the green stitching, which complements the brake canopy is really nice. And it actually goes all the way even in between the seats right there, which looks really, really cool. You can notice also these little plastic winglets that come out here. These are to minimize the uh, air turbulence around your head and actually do a pretty good job at it. You've got a little coat hanger thing here, which I'm not sure anyone will ever use. 
but it, you can also tell that there is a, there is no space behind the seat. So this is one of the things I'll be discussing in my living with a Lamborghini video. The boot is minuscule. So look, flips up like this is tiny, really, really small. Um, so much smaller than what you'd find in, let's say, a 488 in a 911 Turbo S or any other car like that. This is one of the smallest uh, in the segment. So again, another thing I'll be talking about in, in that video, the next video. Today is mainly about just having a quick look around the interior and exterior and then going for the drive. So in the car, you are welcomed by these familiar angular Lamborghini shapes. You've got your lock unlock buttons here all your controls for your lights. Everything is very fighter jet airplane uh, inspired. Um, like even these paddles, massive, thick, quality feeling paddles. Very cool steering wheel on which you have basically all of your controls. So your indicators, your lights, your washers, um, your windscreen wipers, sorry, cruise control, and then this to go through your different settings for your digital dashboard. This we'll talk about a little bit when we're driving. And then here, again, you that, that uh, airplane style uh, continues, you've got your windows are all controlled through the center console here. Your lift system, ESC off, hazards, parking assist, and auto start stop. Yes, the naturally aspirated V10 has an auto start stop. Your climate control, heated seat, which is brilliant in a convertible. All of your controls, yet again, for the digital dash, which we'll switch on in a second. The famous start stop button, a little bit of a gear selector contraption here where you pull up to go into reverse, and then you've got your park and your manual button. So to select first gear, all you do is you pull the right paddle. These are the controls for the roof, which goes up and down, not the fastest, but it's reasonable. Your electric parking brake. This is for the rear window, which you can open and close, uh, whether the roof is up or down, which is very useful, especially when the roof is up, to put down so you can hear the noise better. And then you've got your CD storage back there, which again, I don't think anyone will, will really use. Hidden cup holder and a pretty, decent-ish for a supercar that is glove box that's that let's switch the car on foot on the brake flip this up fire the v10 into life now will this open ah now it's open let me show you the engine quickly ah, how much can we see this is actually the first time i do this nothing absolutely nothing well there you go it is um great that they stayed with the naturally aspirated engine as you'll see when we're driving but again we'll talk about that a bit more when we're on the road so Quickly, just to go over the digital dash, it's all controlled through here. Um, so, you know, you can go to your main menu and then I don't know if you can see right here, this is where your menu is. And it's obviously very Audi inspired because of the Lamborghini being owned by Audi. But yeah, really nice. You've got your Bluetooth, which works quite well. Information on your car as well. It's all in French, so I'm not sure you guys will be able to, to follow too much of that. But it works pretty well. It's actually quite nice having all the information right there. You don't need to take your eyes off the road too, too much. Down here, you do have a little screen with your oil pressure, your oil temperature and your battery levels. So that's kind of funky. I mean, that you've always had in, in previous Lamborghinis. So uh, cool to see that continued. And then through this button here, you can change a little bit of the information which is on the side, these little side screens right here. See, next service, etc. things such as that. So uh, yeah, kind of cool layout that they've done there. Um, it works pretty well. But once the car's on, all you want to do is take it for a drive. So I'm going to put the camera on my head and we're going to go for a POV drive in this. All right, guys, I've come to a spot slightly closer to the nice, uh, driving roads so that we can get straight into things. We're gonna start in uh, Strada, not sport mode. Nice 488 there, look at that. Very nice car, awesome. Uh, anyways, Strada mode, automatic. We're just cruising in this car for now. I hope the angle's okay as well because uh, it's hard to tell when you're uh, alone in the car if the angle is decent or not. So you can tell that the valves are now closed. The car, I mean, you can hear the engine, but it's really not that loud. Hope you're not getting too much wind noise because this windscreen's really low as well. So in Strada mode like this, the car's really usable. I mean, it's no harder to drive than a Golf almost, I wanna say. The steering is really nice and light. The suspension's pretty compliant. You know, you four wheel drive, so you can, you know, kind of go anywhere more than you could in a, in a rear wheel drive supercar. Um, it's not too loud. It's not too aggressive in any way, really. But then, then, because frankly, I don't want to spend too much time in strata mode. You go into sport mode and manual, and all of a sudden, I mean, mainly because you're going to go up in the gears a little bit more. It becomes a completely different beast and uh, 
valves open up, you get those pops and bangs. Now we're going to put the uh, the lift up right here, so the lift is controlled here. It's it's quite a slow lift to go up and down, but it stays up for quite a while. Anyways, we'll talk about that more in the living with a Lamborghini video. <laughs> that sound. Now it goes all the way up to 8,700 RPM. So pretty exceptional sound on this thing. Naturally aspirated V10, of course. Now here, you don't think you need the lift. It's pretty low. Now the brakes are pretty squeaky. Now sport mode, suspension becomes a little bit harder. Throttle response is a bit more instant. Um, and the gearbox kind of livens up a bit. Fantastic gearbox. I mean, incomparable to what you had on like the uh, the Gallardo before and things like that. It's absolutely, it's right up there with Ferrari and um, and Porsche, to be honest. Okay, don't need the lift for these either. It's always a little bit nerve wracking. So we can go up to 70 kilometers an hour here. Off we go. Boom, you get there pretty quickly. <laughs> God, it sounds so good. So sport mode for me is a real sweet spot because once you go into Corsa, like we'll do now, there we go. The gearbox, yeah, it, it livens up a bit more, but too much. It knocks you in the back of the head. I don't know if you can really tell, but it really hits you when you change gear. The suspension becomes even harder. I'm kind of bouncing all over the place. Now I'm sure on track, this must be something pretty special. Oh, the sound. But for me, if I'm driving on the road, sport mode is a sweet spot. It's a little bit more compliant. The gearbox is a little bit less aggressive and it just feels more usable for this kind of driving. The carbon ceramic brakes, really nice feel through those. You can go all the way down into first. So, so fast as well. The four wheel drive really puts the power down. Now, coming out of a corner like this, if I accelerate, you can feel the front end starting to push away from you a bit. There is a bit of understeer by nature of having that four wheel drive system. Um, now, it is quite rear biased, so you know, I haven't tried it out, but I'm sure you can get the rear to slip around a bit. But for me, it does lead to a little bit of understeer which just really makes you want to try out the two-wheel drive version of this car which they've made which must be something oh, pretty special I mean this is pretty exceptional but you can feel when you're starting to really get on it that it does have a tendency to maybe understeer a little bit let's try a little acceleration here so quickly get up to speed in this on the road you cannot feel oh god that noise <laughs> on the road you cannot feel any difference in rigidity compared to the coupe at least with my driving skills and driving on roads like this you can't you know i'm sure that maybe on track you potentially could but this slight extra added weight and loss in rigidity by nature of not having a roof to hold the car together isn't noticeable on the road driving like this look at this road look at the view exceptional so that leads you to think at least for me that no loss in tangible feel and rigidity for driving on road but a definite gain in drama because not having the roof means you hear that exhaust so much more than in the coupe and you got the wind in your hair and it is such a dramatic driving experience oh, i love it i would definitely go for this spider version especially down here in the south of france <laughs> over the coupe I wonder what you guys think about this kind of new style of video. I thought that seeing the road is maybe more interesting than seeing my face whilst talking to you guys about the car. Now then, look, so I'm doing 50 kilometers an hour and the lift will already go up. That's pretty good because on a lot of cars, it would be only 30 kilometers an hour where the lift would start going up properly. This is quite a big speed bump, this one. 
So as soon as you're done on your road like that, you can go into strata mode and this is where you feel that kind of sisterly or brotherly link with the audi r8 a bit more because all of a sudden it becomes so usable so tame sports and corsa mode are the modes in which it really reminds you that it's a lamborghini strata mode is where you feel that maybe audi nature coming into it and to be honest that is no bad thing because it makes the car so usable in different conditions uh yeah it's it's a really really special experience and one that you can enjoy kind of kind of anywhere so i'm excited to be daily driving this for a while god those brakes really do squeak it's pretty horrible now does it feel different enough to the audi r8 v10 plus i've always wondered that to be honest absolutely um, there's something special about it being the Lamborghini. It kind of feels like if you gave two vodka Red Bulls to an Audi R8 V10 Plus. Um, it's just got that extra character which comes through. You know what, I'm sorry, but I just struggle to keep it in Strada for more than a couple of minutes. Let's go back into Sport. Not Corsa, but Sport. Overall, this is a, um, a really fantastic car. And being able to to spend some time with this is just so so surreal i love the interior i love that a lot of the um driver information is uh is right here and you don't need to go down and look at a different screen down here i think they've done that really well doesn't feel dated this car despite it not being the latest kind of greatest model yeah because they really stepped it up in terms of infotainment uh the gearbox all of that stuff it it didn't get that kind of hit that aging kind of hit straight away like the Gallardo potentially did um, this feels like it could continue feeling pretty new ish for a while so um, no I really really enjoyed this experience I'd never completely fallen in love with the hurricane but then when you drive it you realize that the character is just really something that you can fall in love with easily now is it's so hard these days, I, at least I find, you tell me what you think guys, I find it really hard comparing all these cars in different segments, like you should technically compare this to the 488 slash F8, the 720, the Turbo S, but you know, I feel back in the day, there used to be cars which were great and some that were less great and etc, whereas I just feel all these cars are like, this is such an incredible car. So is the 720, so is the 488. They were all so good that I just feel it's a question of taste now. You know, if you want something which is a bit more shouty, if you want something which um, is, you know, like a really precise work tool, you would get the 720. The more shouty would be this, the Hurricane. Somewhere in between would be the 488. If you want something practical, you get the Turbo S. It's so hard to say if one's much better than the other. I just think it's down to personal taste, to be honest. So, as you can probably tell, I'm really enjoying this Hurricane. Really enjoying the Hurricane Spider and really enjoy taking you guys along for a drive and giving you a tour of the interior. And actually, you know what, let's go straight. Let's not turn there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And I hope you enjoy, you see what I mean? I'm doing 65 kilometers now and the lift is still up. Anyways, that's maybe a slightly useless fun fact for you. I hope you enjoyed this new filming technique, new filming idea. I hope it worked, I hope the angle was good. Let me know what you think. And, um, and if you think we should continue doing it this way. Anyways, thanks for watching. As always, I'm saying bye from behind the camera. And I look forward to seeing you again in the very near future. Take care guys, bye bye.